What is, what was, and what will be start here with the words, In the beginning there was... Welcome to episode five of Bearded Game Masters. Uh, today, uh, turns out we're actually down another guy. Uh, real world, you know, work and all that fun stuff takes place. Uh, so it, today it's just going to be myself, uh, Ron, and Mike. I'm back. Yay. <laughs> um, so we're going to try something uh, slightly different uh, this this episode. Uh so what we've got for you guys, you know, in, what, oh man, I can't even talk today. This is killing me. What we've got in store in store <laughs> for you guys today is um, we took a little bit of uh, snippets, if you will, of some news going on in the gaming industry or the gaming world, however you want to say it, uh, that we might have thought that was somewhat interesting here. We want to share it with you guys first. Um, yeah. So we have a pine about what's that? And then we want to opine about. Oh, of course, of course. Um, and then from there, uh, we're going to go into what we're currently playing and there are little reviews on it, if you will. Uh, mm-hmm. So first, the news. Yep. All right. Hey, just um, for any of you collectors out there, we've got uh, some some pretty good news for you, especially Mike. You might like this one, too. I, I know I do. Starting yeah. uh, June 29th. The NES Mini and the SNES Mini will be making a return to maybe like two stores, knowing how like Nintendo is, um, <laughs> until like the end of 2018. So, any of you people out there who are looking to still get your hands on an SNES Mini, if you haven't yet, not or, you scalpers though. Uh, you guys yeah, could you, go to hell. You guys stay away because I refuse to pay you like twelve hundred dollars for an NES Mini. But anyone who's out there who's looking to, you know, not be a complete and utter douche. um, Yeah, starting starting that, you know, June 29th, you're going to be able to maybe hopefully possibly find one in a store or, you know, no, I mean, realistically, you won't be able to because they're still, you know, never you're just never going to be able to find them anywhere. You know, when when Nintendo says they're going to. Yeah, good mm-hmm. luck trying to refresh your Amazon page. It's not yeah. going to happen. I well, did that. It's not going to work. How it's actually going to work is is when in- when Nintendo says that they're going to be making a return, they they really mean that they have like one or two left somewhere in one of their warehouses, <laughs> and they're just going to ship them to some random store, you know, yeah. um, like, starting like the if, June 29th. So you know, if it's like, Nintendo wants to do this right, yeah, you know, they should tell the retailers get some pre orders, limit to two per person. Ooh, and we'll even, just ship to order as we make them. Even, we'll ship them. In, I would in, almost want to say ship like one one pre order a person. I'll give a little benefit of the doubt. You know, maybe one for yourself, one for a gift. But that's I mean, it. And I look. I know scalpers know ways of getting around things like this, but at least some form of pre order. You're limited to how many you could pre order. And we'll just, you know, in the order we receive the 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 pre order, mm-hmm. you'll get the console. Maybe not this year, maybe not next year, <laughs> but it's coming down the pipe, you know. Yeah. And that's the only <laughs> way I can think of it, because otherwise, scalpers are still going to go for this thing. I mean, right? even that's even thing. if, to be honest with you, though, dude, like even if they flooded the stores with them like there's still going to be the scalpers that are right. going to go there because right. you know just as well as i do like 10 years from now when you know yeah. that's just a super hot collector's item those are going to be the only places you're going to be able to get your hands on them i mean i got the super nintendo mini by dumb luck i went to a best buy looking for something completely different and i happened to say, let me look around the, the game section i mean i don't ever do that but mm-hmm. let me look and it, I had to take a couple double takes to realize that this, this thing is sitting on the shelf and it's the only one there. So yep. I'm like, oh, my, okay, I can't afford this, but I'm going to have to get it because otherwise I'll never get it ever. And um, 
the funny thing is, is like when I talk to the one Best Buy employee, he says, yeah, yeah, technically we have a few in the back, but we're not supposed to tell them that anyone that we do, we just put one out at a time when they sell. Yeah. You know, cause the guy kind of knew, I just want this one. I actually want it to play it. Not yeah. wanted to sell it. Yeah. Uh, that I, you know, I, I, you know what? I had that red t shirt that said uh, classically trained with the original Nintendo control on it. So mm-hmm. I think that gave it away. That no, maybe, I really a little, wanted, maybe a little. I, this is what I want to play, <laughs> <laughs> you know? And, um, but I love to get the NES Mini because I want to play the old Mario games. I want to play uh, some of this, I, um, the old stuff, the old mm-hmm. Castlevania stuff, Mega Man 2. Uh, there's a lot of fluff titles on there, filler oh, titles yeah. on it, but, you know, Ninja Gaiden's on there and, and uh, um, oh, it's just, you know, the good games. A lot of, a lot of fun games. A lot um, of games and my childhood right there. Yeah. I know like what, cause like I, I have an SNES Mini and I also got mine by, <clears throat> excuse me, by just dumb luck. Like I walked yeah. into GameStop <laughs> to pick up you know, uh, to pick up, actually, I went to pick up the South Park fractured butthole. <laughs> I still can't say it with a straight face, but I, I pre-ordered it and I'm like, oh, that's out. I want to go pick it up because it was a lot of fun. And like, I'm, I think, I think they still do it. But like when you bought the game new, like they gave you a free copy of Stick of Truth that right. you could play on the PS4, which like, that's a really, a really fun and well done game. But that's a whole nother topic for another day. Um they had they had one an snes mini like on behind the counter but like sitting on like the shelf there and i kind of i looked at it and then i i asked the you know the gamestop employee i'm like is that is that real or is that just an empty empty box to get my you know get my hopes up like nope it's you know it's the last one we have you know but it's (laughs) it's totally real then you know what give me that i i want that instead i i I must have this (laughs) And I, I, you I chose it wisely. Up. Yeah. 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 So there's, there is that little piece of news. Unfortunately though, that's like really all of the good news that I have for everyone. Um, everything <laughs> else is kind of like a real downer. Um, so the less, the least depressing one out of all this, um, I guess would be that, uh, anyone who's out there who, if you've ever been a fan or have played the, the Shenmue games, uh, the first one came out on Dreamcast, and then I no, yeah, I, I don't remember it being on any other ones. But then there was no. Shenmue Two that came out on Xbox, the original Xbox, um, and yeah, I don't think again, I don't think that came out on anything else. But I could be wrong. Uh, <clears throat> I know everybody has been waiting for you know Shenmue Three to come out, and there was a giant Kickstarter for it and everything. And it was supposed to come out this year, but unfortunately it's going to be delayed until 2019. Not sure when in 2019, but just 2019, uh, the publisher deep silver here is quoted on saying that they, uh, they need the, the extra time to polish the quality of the game even further to the highest standard it deserves and release the product in the best possible time frame or, or it deserves to be released. You know, I, I can't, I'm going to stop talking today. I can't do this. This is, <laughs> I'm tripping over my words, but yeah, long story short, it's not coming out yet. Um, they're, they're, they need a little bit more time. They say to, you know, you know, make it all in tip top shape, if you will. Cause you know, if they release that and it's a mess, like people are going to freak. Um, I'll, uh, I'll, uh, uh, <clears throat> look at into this. I think, uh, there's an article from Forbes that said it best. They don't want to pull final fantasy seven remake. Listen, uh, yeah, listen, they, if they get it done, they, they want to get it done right and not give out this big tease like, uh, square did and then leave you hanging. Don't you I talk ill of final <laughs> fantasy in front of final fantasy seven in front of you, because I believe that someday before I die, that damn game is going to come out and I'm going to be able to play it. But realistically, I'm hoping that at this E3, you know, E3 this year, that they're going to give me some kind of info on it because like Square, you're killing me. Come on now. I need this and I need Kingdom Hearts. Don't don't play Flash with my heart alert. like that. Half-Life 3 confirmed. I mean, technically Half-Life 3 <laughs> sort of is confirmed. You heard about is that it, one, right? Well, isn't that that diary? Uh, that diary, that uh, um, like interactive <clears throat> graphics novel that they released? No, no, no. There's, um, oh man, I really wish, 
I like, know I wasn't, some, I wasn't some, prepared I know to talk about this, so I don't have this in the show notes. Well, but, uh, I, well, I know <clears throat> off the top of our head, I know there was some former dev that talked about some of what There's, the storyline was supposed to be. Well, that's uh, the thing is, is that there was one of the, like, uh, it might have been a former dev or a writer for it, but anyway, there was like a short story that was released where they yeah. switched around character names. Um, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. That was sometime last year, I think it was. And so yes. we kind of have a Half-Life well, 3. And No, no, no. There's more because there's an actual game that's being worked on by like, I believe it's a team of like 40 to 60 people who are doing this for free. Oh, I, was um, gonna, I was just about to say, somebody needs to take that story and just make a Half-Life 2 mod. I No, no. It's, it's like Basically. actually from, I, again... I wasn't prepared to talk about this and like <laughs> my, my info on it is a little fuzzy, uh, but basically Wing it like these, I do Ron. Yeah. These, this group of developers are are working on this thing like for free, you know, mm -hmm. on their own time and they've actually gotten like pretty far into it. And I believe they're using a lot of like ass, like old assets and stuff like yeah. that. So they're able to save some time. So it's from my, uh, if memory serves me correct, it's obviously not going to be half-life three because that's, you know, a Valve product, but I believe basically it's 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 going to continue the story and give some closure <laughs> to it. I'm just not entirely sure how they're going to get around, you know, like Valve owning it, <laughs> you know, or they're going to call they're going to call a radioactive radioactive decay one plus two. <laughs> maybe, maybe. <laughs> but um, I mean, there is that possibility, you know, where Gabe and, you know, and. All of his holiness will be like, it's OK, you guys can have this one. And, you know, we'll let them use the assets and kind of like, you know, oh. I don't know. Let them do all the work uh, yeah, yeah. and read the rewards. It's possible. Maybe. It would be nice if they could. But, you know, any company would be silly to let their any IP, even if it's sending their collecting dust to be taken by somebody else, because then they lose all rights to it. So they would probably fight <clears throat> tooth and nail. Yeah, I, I uh, think any I kind of infringement. I think um, what they're doing is kind of like just it, they're it's going to a be a spiritual su successor, kind of like uh, what uh, what they had to do. Uh, uh, the create who uh, the name escapes me, but the guy who created uh, Total Annihilation, uh, when Cave Dog, the developer, went under, they were bought and you know devoured through, you know, you know through hell. I mean, I don't know who owns the IP now for Total Annihilation. He couldn't use, he couldn't make Total Annihilation too, so he made Supreme Commander, which. If you play Supreme Commander, is total annihilation, mm -hmm. but they can't call it that, and they had to change the factions. But you know, I think they're going through and like they're changing. Like obviously, the character names are going to be different, and then they're mm -hmm. they're the models. Obviously, they yeah, can't have Gordon yeah. Freeman look like Gordon Freeman. It's going to have to be no. something some somewhat. Different, I hope they but, make him look like Gabe. <laughs> oh, that'd be funny. <laughs> that would you know, be real funny. All, all four hundred pounds of them. <laughs> but this is something that, you know, obviously yeah. as more details come out, like I'm going to keep an eye on it and, you know, do my best to keep people posted on it. Cause you know, half-life has always been a big thing on it. Right. Um, one of the other pieces of information here and, and, uh, this is one that just really depresses me, um, <laughs> is so anyone out there who's a fan of the monster hunter games, uh, be it if it's, you know, the new one, Monster Hunter World on PS4 or or Xbox or, you know, the previous iterations, so, you know, <clears throat> excuse me. But if you're a fan of it, um, you'll be happy to know that there's a movie coming out for it. Um, you're going to be depressed when you find out that that movie is being directed by Paul W.S. Anderson, uh, who's known for his cinematic um, gems as all of the resident evil movies you know first did one, he do avp uh, uh oh yes he did yeah. one. i i for, i i i won't lie i don't remember which one it was the <clears> first <throat> one because the brothers did the, the, the second the, one okay so like the, the director brothers did say so the first one did which wasn't a bad movie i liked it <laughs> like how do i wear this <clears throat> but, all right so paul ws anderson he is not he is not the worst director that I've seen. No. Um, I have fun with his movies, but like when you and this is this is I might be biased just because I'm a fan of these series. But when you take Monster Hunter or you take like Resident Evil, which has always been like a, a very personal favorite of mine for mm -hmm. since day one. And then like 
like the first movie for Resident Evil was not great, but it wasn't bad. It was it was actually right. pretty decent for the time it came out and pretty decent for a video game movie. And then he did like the second one and then the third one and then like took these characters that I, I liked and then butchered them and then took this <laughs> this story that like quite literally he could have just copied and pasted. And it would have been somewhat decent and just kind of like really did his different twist on it. And at first it wasn't too bad, but by by the fourth movie, when it was it wasn't Resident Evil anymore, it was, hey, look at my hot wife and what she can do uh, movie. That's where I was just starting to get like really like uh, bummed out by it all. Uh, But apparently, yeah, you know, Paul W.S. Anderson, he's he's going to direct a Monster Hunter movie and it's going to star. Uh. Mila Mila Jovovich, Mila Jovovich, the however, fifth element. The fi- yeah, it's going to start the fifth element. Um, so again, like, I like it's I not, like, it's not, it's not hmm. Huel Bull, okay? Uh, or however no, you want to pronounce no. his name. U- or I mean, Uwe? I think it's Uwe Bull. I I know who Uwe you mean, Bull. but yeah, it's, it's not, yeah. it's not it's, him. It's not him. Which I'll give, I'll give that. And like, I may not be a huge fan of you know his rendition of Capcom titles, you know when it comes to making <laughs> them into movies. But I'll give him credit; like he makes Capcom a ludicrous amount of money because he made a buttload of money off the Resident Evil movies when they came out, especially overseas. Like, or it, yeah, pretty much anywhere that wasn't the U.S. Like everybody went nuts right. about it. Um, right. <clears throat> so my f- fingers are crossed that it'll be a fun movie. Um, that's what you can ask for with a with a with a video game movie. I don't really. It needs ex- to be a fun movie. <laughs> to be fair, I don't really expect Monster Hunter to be a riveting story. If, if, if at the very least, it could be a guilty pleasure like Mario Brothers. Oh, uh, you had to bring that one up because I was just about to make a segue into that. Yeah. See, supposedly now this obviously could change because it's you know this is this is only just like in the works now. Uh, supposedly they're kind of gonna. Oh man, I don't even. Um, oh man, I don't even know if I want to say it because it just We're like it have hurts. a Mario Brothers movie. <clears throat> well, kind of because you remember how like the Mario Brothers movies it took place, you know, in like you know dinosaur world and well, alternate it, it, dimension. It, 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 yeah, the dinosaur world was in the alternate dimension, and it started off where it was Mario and Luigi were like in you know present time from when it came out. That's kind of from what I gathered this movie's supposed to be like, where it's going to star Mila and it's going to take place, you know, in, in present day. And then like some alternate dimension is somehow going to open and she's going to get pulled mm-hmm. in and she's going to hunt monsters or some craziness like that. Like it's it's probably going to it. It sounds garbage. It sounds like garbage. I hope it's like I just want a fun movie because it's Monster Hunter, you know. Give me some giant monsters, some ridiculous sized swords and a calico like I'm good. Uh, but yeah, Lucky. Yeah. Oh, oh, no, 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 no. And that's where you just I, need like, like the flashed uh, little monkey picture or something like that. But yeah. Yeah. Well, you know, I, look, I mean, Mario Brothers is a guilty pleasure for me. I actually now enjoy the movie. Oh, I can sit down and watch it. It's it's a, it's, it's, it's a guilty actually, pleasure it, for me, too. But it's still yeah. like a, it's it's bad. Like I like Street Fighter, the movie with Jean-Claude Van Damme. But I mean, <laughs> call it a wacko call. It's it's still the Mario Brothers movies is really bad. Yeah. But, yeah. you know, so, yes, you know, anyone who's a fan of video game movies, there's that, you know, fingers crossed. Yeah, just fingers crossed. It's not a horrible train wreck. Right. Um, And then the the last piece of news that I have and this this one actually is it's you know, it is a little bit uh, a little sad here. Actually, it's really sad here. But uh, Boss Key Studios, uh, they uh gone they're they're shut and they're shut actually no by at this point their doors are shut um yeah. cliffy b you know he uh mm-hmm. he released the the info on twitter i want to say yeah on twitter uh i believe it would have been tuesday um just in case you don't know who boss keys you know boss key is uh they cliff blazinski uh you know relatively well-known guy in the whole industry uh helps look put it this way he, he uh he he worked at epic studios helped with a bunch mm-hmm. of games uh probably the most notable one would be gears of war um yeah. you know he decided he was going to leave epic took a little bit of a break decided to open up his own public you know own studio uh i want i only know of two titles that they well one actual finished title and the one they were working on but they uh 
they released uh, Lawbreakers last year, which was uh, basically like a hero arena shooter. Yeah. <clears throat> Um, now that I, I actually have to say, like, especially not so much now, but definitely last year when the hero shooters were really saturating the market. Yeah, um, it was like everywhere. Everyone was making one. Yeah, every, you know, Blizzard released the one and then it just actually I lie, you know, like TF2 had theirs or Valve had yeah. theirs out for like ever. But then like Blizzard came out and that's, you know, they released Overwatch <laughs> and then it just like really blew up. Um, yeah. That, Battleborn. Uh, yeah, I that mean, war came out the day that see and, the, and, and, oh, and the, man, the, 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 the the lawbreakers didn't have a chance because the market was saturated. They already had mm-hmm. everyone was kind of gravitating <clears throat> to one or two of them, and like Battleborn already I was pretty much already dead, which is a shame. By the time I lawbreakers like came out, mm-hmm. and lawbreakers, the big problem was that it. Uh, my understanding is everyone's complaint was none of the characters stood out from one another. They all See, looked way too similar or felt too similar. I, I never got to play it. I, uh, I had it. But that's I actually, been the complaint that I've seen. Mm-hmm. But oh, at this point, it's you're either you're either Team Fortress 2 with Valve, you're Overwatch, or you're like me, you're still playing Quake 3 or Unreal Tournaments. So. Yeah, like all the two of you <laughs> that are out there. But like, yeah. see, I, I actually had Lawbreakers. Like, I, I had a buddy of mine convinced me to pick it up, and I was like, all right, screw it. Um, it actually, like, I, I to me, I felt the characters were different. You know, they looked right. differently. I felt they played differently. Um, <clears throat> I just, I think, like, their biggest problem was is they came out after, they came out after, you know, Overwatch and all of that. Like, you're just trying to yeah. complete, when you have a new studio with, you yeah. know, brand new IP and you're trying Paladins to compete with, Paladins is the other like, one that's already out. I mean, um, it's just everyone's yeah. got one. Everyone's got one. Um you know, when you're it's trying to compete MMO. with big guys like, you know, Activision Blizzard, like it's it's going to hurt. It's right. really going to hurt. I thought Lawbreaker, ugh, I thought Lawbreakers was a fun game. I enjoyed it. I actually played it a lot at one point, but unfortunately it was only like me and six other people that really played right. the game. Um, yeah. You know, it didn't really work out. It, it was a shame, like I said, because it was good. But then uh, basically Boss Key kind of like tried a last ditch effort. And they released or they put out an alpha for their own version of uh, a, a battle royale game, mm-hmm. you know, trying to again, because now you know, last year was all the hero shooters. This year is definitely, you know, like, uh, you know, PUBG, Fortnite, yeah. uh, any any battle royale games like battle royale last games. Manning, it's I, uh, last mm-hmm. man standing games. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, they're, they're more well known, I believe, as, as yeah. battle royales. But right. like they, you know, put, you know, threw out an alpha of one of their <laughs> own, uh, the name Radical Heights. That's it. Okay. Um, which was basically like, kind of like, how do I word this? It think Fortnite, but took place in the eighties. Um, <laughs> like as I liked the way it looked, uh, but apparently, like it just, they were a little too late uh, to the party. And yeah. unfortunately, they didn't work. You know, didn't work out for them. So you know, and this is they where I like, I, I like to I like <clears throat> to make a mention. This is why I think bot support should still be in games even today. Because when a game fails at multiplayer, and yet you still have five or six people who still like to play it, they bought the game. It'd be nice if they at least could be able to play it. Play it. On their own. Well, I mean, to be fair, too, at that point with those games, or even like the hero shooters, that's something they, if they really cared enough about that, they could yeah. patch that in so you could still play it. But I mean, and, you know, always- it can, and it can be done because, you know, you had mm-hmm. Quake 3 and all that. But also with TF2, they have uh, 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 man versus machine or whatever. You had yeah. a co op uh, versus bots. Mm hmm. And, you know, you could put that in an arena show. It's not that difficult. No, it's not that difficult. But I mean, there's if to be fair, if they really care, they'd do that before they would have shut everything down. But also, I mean, there is that possibility, too, where those IPs might get picked up by somebody else and then they might be revived, if you will. (laughs) Um, If somebody yeah, somebody might buy. I mean, there's going to be a fire sale. Mm -hmm. They they got debts they have to pay. There's going to be a fire sale. Some IPs were going to be like, um. I just hope that it doesn't get uh, thrown away in some uh, IP troll vault that sits there forever yeah. waiting to be used in a lawsuit. Um, you, know? you never know. I mean, I, mean, I, 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 uh, I hate to say it. I'd rather, I'd rather like even EA pick it up before it ends up in dust in one of those troll vaults. You know, I, 
that's fair me, enough. My per, my yeah. pers- I, I want so, you know, I would like something done with it. All right, mm-hmm. but um, I hate for I hate, I hate for an IPs just uh, bite the dust and sit in the in the in the in the this legal hell. Yeah, and you got twenty million people all saying they have rights to something. I mean, look what happened with the Hobbit. It took forever for even the movies to get started because everybody had their fingers in that cookie jar. Especially yeah. then after uh, the success of Lord of the Rings uh, trilogy, now everybody who had an inkling of rights to the Hobbit IP, they came out of the woodwork and they wanted the uh, buku bucks. Oh, so, of course, of course. So I mean, every you know that's the, that's the it's the nature of the beast. It sucks, um, but I hope uh, you know some of these IPs don't uh, fall on the wayside. I like to see yeah, and just end up dying out. Yeah, I like I, to I see some you. competition. I like to see some competition with yeah. uh, with uh, game styles for sure. Uh, okay, you know. Now, uh, our our next little area that we have is we're going to talk about some games that we're currently playing. Um, give you our thoughts on them, a little review, if you will. You know, nothing crazy. A mm-hmm. um, little back and forth. A little back and forth. Uh, I, I'll let you. I'll let you take this one, Mike. You know what? What are you? What are you playing or? What do you want to review here for us? What do you want to give me your thoughts on? Well, one I want to review, and I do play from time to time when I mm-hmm. when I get a chance. It's an oldie but goodie. Probably one of my favorite. It's not my favorite. Uh, I mean, it's definitely the top three okay. favorite games of all time. And it's one that I actually still pick up and play today. And that's um, Elder Scrolls II Daggerfall, which okay. I think is probably the best uh, RPG right up there with Planescape Torment. Um, and I love it because it's an entire world. I mean, the, the the world is about the size of Great Britain. Yes, there's a lot of, at least they never said at the time, but essentially a procedural generation. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, but in terms of mechanics, the uh, character uh, the character creation system, there's a custom, I mean, you have a list of classes you could pick and they all have different skills and different uh, weapon restrictions or whatnot and uh, bonuses or whatnot. Uh, but there's also a custom character creation mm-hmm. system, which I've never seen anywhere else in the game, uh, in in video games. And it's based on like an early uh, grub system, which is like a free version of D&D. Uh, okay. Uh, uh, grubs. Is it grubs? Yeah, GURPS. GURPS. I got the G wrong. Got the R wrong. It's okay. GURPS. It's GURPS. And um, you can make yourself basically nearly invincible, but at the detriment of you're not going to level up that much, buddy. Uh, okay. Or you could actually play an interesting character that has some unique <clears throat> weaknesses. Uh, and, um, you know, you basically have this whole world. You don't have to do the main quest at all. And it doesn't feel like you're missing out on anything. Um, you, the world... The, the mentality, the, the mentality when they were designing this game was that the game is supposed to be the dungeon master and you're playing in it. Mm-hmm. And it feels like that. I mean, you could decide where you want to go, but the game still kind of guides you around. Um, it, it does feel like a very living world. Things like gold weigh on your body. So you can't carry that much gold. So it means you got to go to a bank. You got to put money in a bank. And you 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 could buy homes, you could buy a pirate ship for crying out loud in this game, compared to the later Elder Scroll games where you you know you could get a house or two, right? Okay. Um, and it, it, it's just a, it's a lot of fun. The dungeons are if dungeons are really <laughs> uh, here. Here's the thing: if you're going to do a quest, uh, the game allows this is an, like this is a '96 uh, DOS title. You had six save states, save, uh, safe spaces. Okay. When you play the game, you have to use all six. You have to have, um, you have to save before you take the quest, mm-hmm. save before you enter the dungeon, save when you enter the dungeon and then make, you know, make some saves while you're doing the dungeon. All okay. right. Because at any point, either the game, when it generated the quest and the dungeon goofed and you can't get to the quest or the game bugs out, and you crash the game, even back then it was typical Bethesda, and you have to start over again. Okay. Um, so you kind of have to work around the game. Um, 
one of the other really awesome things with this game is that I know in the other Elder Scroll games, you can play as a, you can become a vampire or a werewolf, but in Daggerfall, you can also become a rare boar. Okay. And that's pretty nifty. I mean, it's pretty much plays the same as a werewolf, but you're a rare boar. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. Yeah, that's got to count for something. I mean, there's uh, probably somebody out there who's that, you know, that's their thing. Yeah. I, I got the, I got the, it's hard to do, uh, but I got to do that. And it's a lot of, it's a lot of fun. Um, you can't be like the master of all the cla- of all the uh, factions like you can in, in Morrowind or uh, uh, any of the other Skyrim. ones. Yeah, uh, because if you don't do enough quests after a certain amount of time, they start you, they start knocking your your rank. <laughs> so oh, really? you got to yeah. So you got to you have to keep up with the guild. So you, it forces you to choose which guild you want to be part of, and that's purely based on what skills you got. Mm-hmm. All right, and. You have a lot of, you have your combat skills, you have your stealth skills, you have your magic skills, you also have language skills. Um, it's a little wonky, but you can essentially, if you have a good enough skill in them, you can actually befriend certain enemies and they won't bother you in the dungeons. Okay. So you can be almost like a peaceful character in the game. It's, it's really hard to do. The game is geared towards uh, combat. Um but uh, the other nice thing is that with combat, and I'll, I'll finish it with this, with combat, unless, instead of just clicking the mouse button and you swinging the sword, you actually have to hold the right mouse button and then swing the mouse in the direction you want to swing the weapon. So it feels like you're actually wielding the axe or the mace. And okay. That's an interesting you can, little yeah. setup. And you can actually wear yourself out if you're really in combat. So I know they don't do that anymore, but... Yeah, you know, in, in, in games anymore, but I, that's that's that just immerses you a little bit more into the game. So, yeah, I, like I said, I, I, it's one of my favorite games. I love it, and it's a shame that you will we'll never get another game like that ever. Well, I mean, you never know. Yeah. You can always keep yep. those fingers crossed, right? Yep. <clears throat> well, I let's have you uh, pick one. You know, you're you're going on about right now. You're talking about what, a single player game. I'm actually I, I've been playing. Uh, a multiplayer game that I've been having a lot of fun with. Now, I, I got to give a little little side note to this while, before I get into it is I absolutely ever since Evolve, because uh, that was the first one that I played. Uh, mm-hmm. I have just really enjoyed like the asymmetrical survival horror online multiplayer games, you know, yeah. like the Evolve or the the Friday the 13th. You know, I actually have a lot of fun with uh, the one I've, yeah. I, I'm actually enjoying a lot and I'm, I'm glad that I picked it up is is Dead by Daylight. Now, this mm-hmm. uh, just to give you a little idea what you're looking at here is is just it's it's a four V one. So you have. <clears throat> Excuse me. You have you have four players, uh, your your survivors, you know, uh, trying to escape from the in this particular game. It's it's the killer, you know, right. and, and now it, this this was a game that was made by uh, Behavior Interactive. It's published by Starbreeze Studios. Um, they they created their own characters. They created their own, you know, uh, killers for this. And. Each each survivor has like their own pros and cons to him, if you will. Uh, the mm-hmm. same goes for each of the, the killers. And uh, they all play relative. Well, at least the killers play completely different from one another. The survivors uh, sort of play differently from one another, at least from what the ones that I've played so far. Um, mm-hmm. And now it's got like this whole uh, character customization to it, which like, I, I like, I like the form of, I like feeling progression, you know, right. playing the game, you level up, you earn this for your characters, you earn that, which is really cool. Um, but probably like the biggest thing for me is because I, I'm, I am a bit of a horror movie buff here is hmm. they've gotten the, the rights to use some of my some of my favorite horror movie characters in this game, like there is a leather face. You can as the like, granted, this is as the killer. You can play as Leatherface. Um, you right. can play as as, you know, Freddy Krueger. You can play as Michael Myers, <laughs> um, you know, or you can play as Jigsaw. Uh, and they're really? going to be. Yeah, they're going to be doing one where I believe it's going to be the killer from Scream. Well, the Scream killer, whatever the hell he's called. Um, 
you know, so they've got all these other different horror movie, uh, these iconic horror movie characters in this game that you can play. And they all have for every killer that they introduce in this, they have a survivor counterpart for them. So like, um, Freddy Krueger, they kind of based it off of like the, which is a shame really, but they, well, yeah, no, it is kind of a shame. They base it off of like the newer Friday the 13th. So they have like the newer looking character model for him. And then Uh, I, I've seen the movie twice because I wasn't really that into it. Um, but they have one of like the survivors is one of the characters from the newer, the newer movie on it. Um, so basic premise, they you're dropping the game uh, survivors. You need to sneak around the map, activate these generators. And once you have five generators running, you get out. You you get to the door, open the door, get the hell out before the killer gets you. The killer, your objective, pretty simple. Kill, kill the survivors, you know, do what you got to do. Some of the some of the killers, you can put down little traps, you know, and kind of catch them that way. Um I actually have to say, because I've having played a few different ones where I actually like this one a lot is, is when you're playing the survivors, it gives you like a third person view. So you get a really good view of your surroundings and what's going on around you. When you're playing the killer, it puts you in first person mode, which you would think like, oh, I play a lot of FPS is like I can pick these people out. No problem. Actually, no, it's it's in my opinion, it's it's a lot harder to play as the killer unless I'm just that bad at them, which is also very possible. But uh, I felt it was a lot harder to, to actually win as the killer than it was as the survivors on there. Um, I guess I'll end this on like this was a game that like I want to say came out in 2016 and still yeah. yeah it came out on pc in 2016 and then consoles last you know in 2017 yep. and it's still getting support you know and it's still getting that's good like it actually has from my knowledge like a pretty decent player base on it and you know like i said when i started this i like i'm a sucker for these kinds of games like i just i have so much fun with them <laughs> especially with a group of friends like it's just a great yeah. time uh so definitely if you like those asymmetrical horror games like that definitely take a look into it yeah, I've always had a hard time with third person. You know, then I like I said, I, you, mm-hmm. know, I, you know, I grew up. I when I'm playing 3D shooter games, I've got accustomed to the keyboard and mouse, and that works better with a first person view as opposed to third person. All right, I, I get you. So, I get you. It takes a little getting. Well, for you, it would probably take a little bit getting used to. Yeah. But you know, yeah, third person doesn't feel right on a mouse and keyboard. It feels better if I hooked up the uh, Xbox controller to the computer. If I had the okay. third person, then it, yeah. it feels a little bit better. So, but first person yeah. just feels, and that's just me. Uh, okay. Mileage may vary. So <laughs> fair enough. What else you got there, Mike? Uh, I'm going to throw in a uh, dark horse over here. Um, okay. It's a game. It's a puzzle game. And, and I don't think it gets enough love out there and it's called anti-chamber. And okay. it was really a, a proof of concept when the unreal engine three came out, uh, was first being developed. Uh, this is a game. First of all, if you don't like bright white, don't play this game because it's everything is white with black outlines. Um, uh, the game is very, um, I know I'm going to butch, butcher this, um, uh, the, this, uh, this Greek word, non Euclidean. Okay. Uh, th- e- Let's, uh, how do I how do I explain this? Like you go down the hallway, you make like let's put it this way: you make four, like you make three right hand turns, and you end up in a totally different room. Oh, okay, okay, and you, and then you spin around, and the hallway you just came from is something different. Right, things like that happen a lot in this game, okay. and to solve puzzles, you really have to be aware of your surrounding. Um, now, eventually it, it kind of goes down into this. Uh, you, you, you finally, you find these, they're not guns, but they're more like tools to manipulate certain color blocks. And your goal is basically to keep upgrading your, your, your uh, tool uh, so that you can advance to different puzzles. And you can always leave, the chamber by pressing escape key and you're in this little safe room where you can see all these little 
uh, when you're going through the game, there's all these little pictures with little anecdotes and you, it's kind of like a collection. And, um, you, so you get a wall of these things and you can, to mm-hmm. kind of show your progress, um, okay. in the game. The goal is to escape, of course. And I have finished the game. Um, and, uh, it's a really interesting ending. I won't, I won't give it away at, at all, but this is a game that I could sit down if I got nothing really to do. And I don't feel like really being involved in a, in a shooter or, or a role-playing game. This is a game I could just pick up and just, I find myself uh, lost in it for sure. Uh, it, it's, you, you gotta have to have an open mind. If this, okay. if you're, if you're somebody who's very logical and can't handle, uh, twists in reality, Mm-hmm. Uh, or yeah, you know, things that should not do not work in real life. Okay, then you're gonna have a hard time with this game because this game really plays with you. It really messes with you, and uh, you kind of have to. You got to work with this. Uh, this thing. and it's a it's a technical achievement because normally you could never do something like this in a 3D game space. But Unreal Three Engine, the Unreal Engine, Unreal Engine Three, uh, allows for this kind of manipulation. And so the game is really like a proof of concept that actually is really good. And it is, mm-hmm. it's a, it is on steam. And I say, we're, I definitely, I would, I would say, pick it up if you can. It's a great game. Okay. I'll yeah. have to check that one out. Yeah. I, I yeah. I've heard about it, but I haven't actually played it myself. Yeah. Um, I guess the, the next on, on, on my list here, this, it would have to be, so Anyone who who bought uh, Nintendo Switch at launch, um, you basically have this game and you know what I'm going to talk about. But for the <laughs> few of you who may actually listen to this and don't have a Switch, um, go get one uh, because it's great. And I want everything on the Switch. Um, Skyrim? Uh, no, no. Well, I mean, <laughs> I, I have to believe it or not, I have Skyrim on it and it's 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 a lot of fun. But you know what you could call it like a skyrim light very mm-hmm. skyrim light but uh i actually it only took me a year to do it just because i take like my sweet old time with them right. but it would be the the legend of zelda breath of the wild uh this is you know this is i i've been a bit of a fan of the zelda games like since i can well, honestly since like since the first one now nah, you know what, not i i never played really? it i didn't actually start playing zeldas until the super nintendo and then okay. I ended up going back and playing the previous ones. Okay. Right. Um, but I, I actually, I have to say, like, I didn't actually appreciate them for what they were until Majora's Mask, or not Majora's Mask, uh, Ocarina of Time. Like, okay. I, that one I played, and then I was like, oh, wow, this is actually a lot of fun. And then I went back again and checked out the previous ones, and I'm like, oh, these are really good, too. But anyway, long story short here, mm-hmm. but, you know, I get too winded on the previous Zelda's, like, right. the Breath of the Wild. Like, this is um, this is a launch title for the <laughs> Nintendo Switch. Uh, this is, you know, obviously, this is a Nintendo game, like, so they're going to make sure it's definitely primo when it was released. But, yeah. Um, Oh man, I don't even know where to start. That's the thing. Uh, I, you have I, I like the the art style to it. It's it's kind of got a, a s- cell shade to it, right? Um, Without being so cartoony like uh, yes. Wind Waker. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Um, this is an absolutely e- enormous world. Um, mm-hmm. You know, there's so much to do. Uh, the the <laughs> There, there's a lot of different things you can do now. Don't get me wrong. It's it's it has its faults. Um, I know there were some people who weren't a fan of the uh, like the weapon breaking system that you they see, put into I, the game. I, I, that's I think actually it's cool. trigger for me. Yeah, see, that's the thing. That's me too. Like I like the fact that like you have to, you know, basically it's resource management. Yes, and there's one weapon in the game that doesn't technically break. It just needs to recharge, and that's the master yeah. sword. Yeah. Um, Oh, and, and the Master as, Shield. But like yeah. as an old school RPG or, you know, weapons, uh, a weapon and, uh, you know, equipment de- uh, degradation was mm-hmm. always a thing. And s- to see that come back, I know uh, some people uh, poo pooed it, um, but I, I'm like, that's. You, you, Nintendo, you got balls to bring that back. And I'm, yeah, they do, to you especially, guys. especially on a, on a, on a Zelda game or right, Legend of right. Zelda game, um, which is supposed to be like the easy, like easy mode kind of adventure game to an extent. Yeah. I mean, yeah. so 
there were people that complained, like, I know weren't a fan of that. Um, the story, the actual story to the game is a little like, what? You know, it's it's a little weird. Um, it, it's definitely, I, I don't want to say it's open for interpretation, but... It's the they, journey that's really makes the game, right? Yes, it's it's definitely like I'll put it this way: like this game when I when I first played it, I was like, I was definitely like, oh, I want to know what's going on with the world because the way they you know depict Hyrule in this particular title is probably my favorites that I've seen so far. Like, I just really like how everything is. Um, they introduce kind of like these like side characters, you know that that help Link throughout mm-hmm. the story um, that that's where I feel like they really dropped the ball. Cause they, they introduce like these, these group, these, these four, oh my God, I can't talk still. They introduce <laughs> these four people, um, you know, who tried to help you a hundred years in the future, or a hundred years in the past. And no, uh, unfortunately like didn't work out and you know, they, you know, met their demise demise. Yeah. Um, but they introduce these characters and it's just like, oh, man, I, I want to know more about them. Like, you know, give me something. And they they don't do too much on that one, which is kind <laughs> of a shame. Uh, now, there was like they did release like some DLC for it. I haven't tried that okay. out yet. So, I you know, maybe they actually give you a little bit more back history on these characters. Maybe not. I, I don't know. I, I can't say there on that one. Um, and I think the I, I can't say. I mean, I liked it. There might probably be people who didn't like it is they they don't really have the the dungeons, if you will, like in the previous games. Like, you know, let's just take Ocarina of Time. Like everybody's played that one where there was like the water temple and then the forest Mm -hmm. temple and all that. Those aren't in this game. Really? Yes. There are no water temples. There's no, you know, (gasps) any of them. What they kind of do. So. Without ruining anything for anyone who might listen to this and hasn't played it yet. um, That's me. They instead of the temples, they have like these. There's like there's a lot. I think there's like 120 something of them. There's these shrines Mm -hmm. that you find as you explore, you know, Hyrule. And, you know, you go inside and some of them have like some actually really well done puzzles, you know, that you have to you know, figure out and get to the end. And essentially how this works is, is when you complete four of these, uh, these shrines, at, you know, at the end of every shrine, you get this item, you get four of this said item. Uh, you can use it to either a increase your heart containers or B increase your stamina one or the other. Um, right. so it, 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 what what I liked about it is is because it makes you think like, OK, what do I need more right now? Do I need the ability to, you know, do I need more stamina? You know, if that's your play style or do I need more hearts? If that's your play style. Uh, I liked it. I thought it was a lot of fun. The shrines were cool. You know, like I finished it and now I'm not going to lie to you. And this I don't get this with many games, especially nowadays. Right. Where I finish a game and I'm sitting there going like, damn, I. I'm actually debating on like just deleting my save file and starting it all over because I liked it that much. Like I'm looking for an feeling. Ex- yeah. I'm looking for an excuse to go back and play this again because I really just had that much fun with it. Um, now, like I said, I know there's deals. There's DLC that came out. Mm-hmm. I have to do a little, I want to do a little digging on that and see if it's worth it without having anything spoiled out or spoiled on me. Um, so Definitely, if you're a Zelda fan and you have a Switch and you don't have this for some unknown reason, go get it. Uh, If you're a Zelda fan but you don't have a Switch, go get it. Uh, Switch is great. I love it. Everything needs to be on it. Give me more Switch. It's on my wish list this year for sure. Oh, definitely, definitely. Um, But I like. I'll put it this way. uh, To end this on here, is it the the is this the best Zelda that I've played? No, no. I, I wouldn't say it's like the best one that's come out since. But I think this is damn good and high up on the list. Um, it's but isn't it Nintendo's first attempt at like a full open world game? Um, to my knowledge, yes. Yeah, I don't really recall any of the other. No, no, because you know, no, I believe. Oh man, it's been a while. But I mean, no, I mean, it's open, not open, not like we, we, you know, where uh, 
you're only re- you, you, we're going to guide you to this one area and oh, you got to go to this one oh, area. No, we're no, 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 no. Open, yeah. Like this open is, world where you play this if you want to go you to want. that mountain, you're going to go to that mountain. Yeah. Oh, and you know what? Actually, that's something I do want to point out here and I, I have to give them credit for it. <coughs> Excuse me. So yes, you are correct. He's like, when you fire this game up, there is like kind of like an, uh, you know, tutorial era. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Uh, But after that, like you go where you want, you play how you want. There's no like go to this temple because you need this item, you know, and like, Mm -hmm. oh, hey, you got that item where now you can go to only this temple because you have that item. And so it doesn't really hold your it doesn't hold your hands. It lets you do whatever you want, which I think is really awesome. And it just really well, a breath of fresh air when it comes to this game. <laughs> but, um, um, but also, I, I what I have to give them credit for is, is when you first fire that game up and you get out of, you know, out of the, intro, you know, the little introduction area. When you look around the world and you see the mountains at the distance, you know, in the distance, you can run to those mountains and you can climb said mountains. Like yeah. there's no pre-render, like whatever you, you know, because of the power, like what the switch can actually do and whatnot. Like there's really not much when it comes to like, uh, no, hold on. Let me reword this. Whatever you see, you can go to. And I think that's really cool. You know, I, that sounds like a Nintendo policy when they were developing it. I I think so. Yeah. 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 Um, Nintendo would think of something like that. And to be fair, like with, you know, obviously the switch isn't like the most powerful system on the no. market there. No. But like when you walk, when you look around the world and whatnot, and especially at the items, because you would think, and this is what I was going to, I was trying to say earlier, but like you would think like, because it is a lot less powerful than some of the other stuff out on the market, you would think when you have this huge open world, you know, and you see mountains in the distance, they're going to look like trash. They're going to look like trash. And <laughs> Like, no, in my opinion, it looks really good. And like, I just like there, there isn't much that I myself can actually say that bad about this game. Like I liked it. I think it was good. It's definitely in my top three of like favorite Zelda games. No complaints there. No, not at all. Not Mm -hmm. at all. So what do you got? So what do you, what do you got there? But which, what's your, what's your third one here? I'll, I'll finish, I'll finish on my list with, uh, a really good sh- grand strategy game called mm-hmm. Europa Neuralysis 4. I hope I said that right. Um, <laughs> <laughs> it's, a, it's, it's a grand strategy game in that, in that you have to deal with uh, everything from diplomacy to warfare to your economy to uh, espionage. And it, it, it's like everything. There's a lot of thing. Inflation is something you have to worry about, for example. Oh. And it's it's rooted in history. Uh, the game takes place. Uh, it, it, it sets you on Earth from 1444 to 1821. So okay. from the fall of the Byzantine Empire to just after the French Revolution mm-hmm. uh, and Napoleon come around the corner. So in that time frame, uh, you basically have 400 years to do what you want. And the the, the if you're if you're ever inter- interested in history. This game is great because you can start at any point, you know, even down to the day uh, between those two years mm-hmm. and the world will change according to, uh, at least to their best, uh, the bar- paradoxes of best ability uh, to what the world was at the time, what nations were, where, where they were, how powerful they were, what wars were being done, who was, you know, everything at that moment was done. Um some of it's a little, uh, little uh, chintzy, like uh, if you set the world to uh, J- July 4th, 1776, suddenly uh, the 13 colonies become the United States, even though that wasn't until another year or two, um, uh, technically. Uh, still, it, that you know, even if you just did that and not even play the game, it's really interesting to see uh, the, the the various nations at certain points. And it, it's a, it's a good history lesson there, but actually playing the game is a lot of fun. The thing is though, paradox decided, in, in the, you know, in order to uh, support this game, finance this game, obviously there's the, uh, the, the initial purchase of the game, mm-hmm. but they have this thing where every, three, four months, they release an expansion pack or a DLC for anywhere from 10 to $20, depending on what's in there. And 
the thing is though, now that we're down to like, I think the 15th expansion pack, this game came Holy out crap. in 2013 and it's 2018. We just had a last expansion pack on uh, March 20th, 2018. You like the final one or you mean just like that's no, the most no, we're, recent we're, one? They're still, they're still going. That's the oh, most okay. recent one. Okay. And here's the thing though. Now, uh, this is a paradox has this problem with like crusader game uh, with the uh, crusader king and stellaris is going to have the same problem eventually where you can't play the game without all the expansion packs and the thing is though if you go on steam and you want to buy the game with all the expansion packs if you're not in the steam sale the game's going to run you a couple hundred dollars Boy, hey. all right so this is the problem if you start if you get into the game early enough and and whatnot it's not that difficult to every now and then oh there's another expansion pack let me throw a 20 you know, let me throw 10 bucks because a i like the developers to continue working on the game and b it's new content um now, now you know when they release an update uh what they do is they release an update with all the free content of uh, free updates and then they have the expansion pack to go along with it so you could just not get the expansion packs but you lose out on, on certain, uh, uh mechanics, for example. Okay. And it kind of, it, it, people, ha, uh, people have shown paradox. Look, people who don't, you know, if you just play the game, the base game, the game is broken at this point because there's certain things later on, certain expansion packs expect you to actually have prior expansion packs, um, to make things work even to make things actually work. So that's actual problem. The game is facing. Uh, but if you can, if you, uh, on a steam summer sale, uh, paradox knows this. So they'll do like a steam summer sale where they, the whole thing is like on a steep discount, maybe with the exception of the, uh, the last couple expansion packs to mm-hmm. so get the whole thing. instead of, instead of like for $200, it's like $20. I would say that's an absolute steal. Grab it. Um, okay. But it's a grand strategy game. You're thick. You're thinking big picture here. So it's nation building it's diplomacy. Some, you know, if you play like, like Austria, for example, it's not really about warfare. It's about diplomacy. Whereas, you know, if you play Ming China, it's about trying to keep your nation from blowing up into different factions, much like real life, you know, or if you play Japan, Japan's fun to play because you're basically trying to, you can play one of the uh, shoguns or, or daimyos, or, or you can play the emperor himself and try to unite Japan. All right. Mm-hmm. And then you go ahead and conquer China and Korea if you want, you know, why not? You know, um, you could play as one of the Indian tribes in North America. And, you know, I've seen gameplays where people actually do so well, they actually start colonizing Europe. <laughs> 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 a little poetic justice there. Yeah. So, I mean, the game starts at a, at a, at a, uh, historical point in time but after that the, the 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 gloves are off it's also multiplayer you can play with friends you can actually start with custom nations you can you can edit a nation uh but you could do you know you know you could do what you want if you want to play ireland and try to conquer britain you know god bless you you know godspeed because i i sure tried i can't do it <laughs> you know um you know, you know, it, it, you could do, it's a little, it's a little, it's, it's a lot of fun. It's kind of like, um, it, it's kind of like uh Dwarven Fortress and that you the fun is actually playing the game. Mm-hmm. And it's not really about, Oh, I got, I lost, you know, I, I got conquered or whatever. That's just, that, that's still part of the uh, fun of the game. You just start again. You start over again. Yeah. You know, you pick up the pieces, you start over again. It's not, it, it's, it, there's not, I mean, the end game technically is to go from 1444 all the way to 1821. But really, it's just to have fun, play the game and, you know, shits and giggles. All right, fair enough. Yeah. And fair like enough. I said, there's, there, this is this is my multiplayer pick, too. There's okay. Multiplayer okay. To it. Um, um, so. so what I find is funny is, is where you started with a, a single player game and then ended with a multiplayer game. I'm actually start. I've started with a multiplayer game and I'm ending mine on a single player game. Uh, <laughs> the last one on my list here would have to be God of War the, the, for PS4. So God of 2018. War 4, God of War 2018, whatever way you want to look at it. Is it like the eighth one? Uh, I mean, uh, technically, I think if you go in like, uh, yeah, not chronological order, but if you go through all the games, it probably just, is. I find it funny that it's the sequel to God of War 3 is just called God of War. 
Yeah, yeah. Um, this now, if if you haven't played this game, if you don't own a PS4, uh, but you've played the previous got previous God of Wars, like this is nothing like the pre like the other games. Like this is the uh, I I don't even know where to start. Like, hmm. okay, first off, it's an absolutely gorgeous, gorgeous game. Um, I mean, I, I have to say that, uh, 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 Sony, uh, Santa Monica studios, like they knocked it out of the park there uh, with just how that looks. Um, you have, so, it, you know, God of War three ended where, you know, you know uh, spoiler warnings here, mm -hmm. um, where you, you know, you killed Zeus and everything like that. And, you know, you got your revenge and. You know, you were you were done with, uh, you know, being being the the newer God of War, if you will. Um, there's man, I don't even like. Ah, there's just so much to this game. Like I, the the shift in story, the fact that you actually made Kratos, you know, a, an an interesting character, in my opinion. You know, he instead of being like that young, angry, I'm gonna beat the hell out of everything kind of guy, like he's a lot older. You know, he's calmed down. You know, if you will, uh, significantly. You know, from his younger days, uh, he has a son who, ah. you know, otherwise known as Boy. Really, you know, that's <laughs> it's Boy. Um, hey, Boy. Boy. Yes. Uh, you know, but he's he's got a son, Atreus, who I, I actually have to say, like, at first I was kind of like, oh, man, like, like, I hope this isn't like a like, uh, 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 what's it called? Uh, oh, man, the name of it is escaping me right now. But let me all right, let me try this a different way. When the game started, they introduced his character and like, you know, you realize that he's going to be with you this entire adventure. Like at first I was like, game? kind of. Yeah, that's that's yeah, that's that's so what like I was looking Bioshock for. Bioshock Infinite. Yeah, except for like, I actually thought Bioshock Infinite did it pretty well. Like, this does it uh, better than Bioshock Infinite. Let me put oh, really? it that way. Yeah. So if you liked Bioshock Infinite and like how that is, this does it significantly better. Um and especially because like I was going to say, like his character at first, I was like, oh, man, like, don't be don't be that character. And then he actually like yeah. gets pretty interesting. And in my opinion, like really holds the story together. Um, also, another really big you know thing to this is that this this one takes place in all in Norse mythology. Mm. Um, and again, you know. <clears throat> Santa Monica Studios, they really knocked it out of the park here with just the with the design of the world. Mm -hmm. uh, you can. Well, within reason, you can pretty much do what you want to do and play it how you want to play and you can really explore and check stuff out there. Um, and. Their attention to detail on certain things, I I find just absolutely amazing, you know, like the. One of the things that I was. I was particularly blown away by was like the world serpent and right. you know, and you oh, meet, uh, Oh, what the Midgard? Yeah. Well, yeah. You're, you're on Midgard. Um, okay. I believe, no, wait a second. Hold on. Are do you going to, yeah, yeah, no, you're on Midgard. Yeah. Mid yeah. Midgard was the, the, uh, Norse, uh, serpent, uh, the, the guarded, uh, kind of like, uh, uh, well, in the world or something like that. And then this particular one, you're, it actually takes place on Midgard. Um, yeah. I know they talk about the world serpent and I'm also going to say that I am not like all that versed in Norse mythology. And I know I've already mm. forgotten some of the characters. Names. I'm not either, but I just I'm like a big Thor's, fan of, uh, Thor's yeah. kids. I, I don't remember their names. Yeah. I, I'm um, a big fan of the, uh, Oh my goddess anime. So I got a little bit of Norse mythology underneath my belt. <laughs> Oh, okay. At least, from okay. That, at least from that, because that that anime is heavily based on uh, Norse mythology. Okay. Oh, you know Sorry. what? No, actually, I, I did a quick look up here on it. I'm not even going to begin to try to pronounce the world serpent's name. It's like 
does it start with a Y? No, no, it starts with a J. Um, okay, okay. And I just like I know if I try to say it, I'm going to butcher it. Because I know and the so, World Tree is Yggdrasil, which is a, you know, I had to hear it in order to pronounce it. Because yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, um, this this is going to be that case where it's just like I'm not going to try to but you know I'm not going to butcher this. Like mm. I know who it is. It's you know um, basically uh, oh, the icy land of the dead. No, 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 About no, this no. land of the giants. Yeah. No, it's like, oh man, I want to say it's, I, you know, and I, I don't even want to say it because yeah. I'm just going to butcher I, it. I'm, so, I'm, looking at, anyway. I'm looking at them right now and I, I see, I see a lot of the, uh, the, the, the stuff here. Um, okay. So yeah, I, I know you got some, you got some really choice words. Yeah. Look, sorry, folks, American English. We can only go so far, you know. Well, Sorry. I just don't want to butcher anything, so I don't want to piss anybody <laughs> off. But anyway, but I, like I see that uh, Tilk uh, does the the voice for uh, uh, Kratos. Yes, Christopher yes. Judd. Yep. So that's instant win for me. Yeah, there was. I actually have to say, like, I was. I I didn't realize it was him at first. Like yeah. it took me a little bit for for that to kick in and be like, oh wow, okay, I know who you are. Yeah, but, well, um, because he's played Tilk so much, you only hear him as Tilk. You don't hear him as the Elf. Yeah. Although um, that same actor did play MacGyver uh, in the MacGyver across from uh, 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 Richard Dean Anderson, and that's mm -hmm. that. You know, people look back at that and, and they and they laugh because um, that took place long before uh, Stargate. Okay. No. Yeah. Anyway, nerd talk. Um, <laughs> the um. Let's see here. Oh, yeah, I was saying the attention to detail, like when I saw the world serpent and, you know, like there's like seaweed hanging off and it almost kind of makes like a little goatee for him. But like also <laughs> like the like the scales on him, they were each individual scales, like just stupid little stuff that I saw like on him and in different things around the world that like I just I I thought was really awesome. Um, also, like I got to say, whoever decided to put Mimir in that story as well and kind of like make him one of the main characters like i love you because i love mimir um <laughs> but anyway it's like to to you know kind of get to the point here i mean it's it's an absolutely gorgeous game with a very interesting story and absolutely awesome combat um i i for me i can't find anything that i didn't like I I have to say, like from beginning to end, I enjoyed ever actually a lot. From beginning to end, I enjoyed everything until I got to the end and then realized, damn you, this is how you're gonna end this for me. Like that's not cool because now I have to wait until you give me the next one. Um like they they really Santa Monica Studios I can't think of many things or anything off the top of my head that I didn't like that they've done. Uh you know, so I, I yeah. tip my hat to you guys. I, I have to say, like, you are awesome at what you do. And if you haven't played God of War, the, the new God of War, <laughs> you know, get your hands on it. Play it. If you don't have a PS4, either, you know, man up and buy one or, you know, look at watch, watch Let's Plays online. You know, don't yeah. miss out on this story that I, I think is, is really interesting. And and it, one of the other things that I really liked about it is because it just really shows, you know, how much games have changed, like from PS2 to mm -hmm. now. You know, right. you actually have like the, the, the previous God of Wars, you know, they were their stories like I. I played one I, on PS3. Yeah, like for me, I never played the previous God of Wars because it had like a riveting story. I just wanted this hack and slash. That's what <laughs> that was to me. You wanted um, a Diablo clone. Yeah, kind of, kind of, you know, and that that's what they gave me. You know, this one actually has a story. It's got a strong female lead, which, mm -hmm. to be honest, is kind of nice to get in a God of War, considering how they depict females most of the time. Yeah. Um, <laughs> If so, they did it all, yeah. If they did it all, yeah. But it was, you know, those that they did depict in it, it was basically, yeah. It, yeah, it, like it was either eye candy or it's like uh, not even a paper bag would, would, uh, would, uh, would fix that. Yeah. So, like, <laughs> I, I just, like, I think they, they took, they went in the right direction with everything. And then also, right. like, they've got Troy Baker and I love Troy Baker. Just saying. Mm. You yeah, know, Troy Baker, yeah. if you're ever going to listen to this, like, <clears throat> you're awesome. I love you, dude. <laughs> I love Troy. Nah, but anyway, um, 
No, Troy Baker, if just to get he's he's a voice actor. He just like, oh, my God, like every character I've ever seen him as like or heard him as I just I love he just is so good at his job. But then I'm not just going to sit here and spend the rest of my time talking about Troy Baker. What I'm just actually so you know, going to get does, into. Uh, Ron does have a, uh, a likeness of him in his boudoir. <laughs> Uh, well, like I said, get your hands on a copy of this if you if you can. Right next to the uh, sheriff of Nottingham. No, no. All right. Let's continue on here. Um, definitely like I, I actually would have to say like this is definitely like a system seller. Mm-hmm. So it's good. Get it. Play it. Enjoy it. Thank me yeah. later. Yeah. Thank so, you, Ron. Yeah, no problem. No problem. <laughs> well, that's uh. That is all the little reviews that I have for for uh, for you today. Um, yep, same for me. So, and it's looking like that. It's about that time to wrap things up. Yeah. Um, so I want to say, you know, to the maybe five or six people who have listened to this, like, thank you. Uh, if you could, definitely give a thumbs up or like it, share it, uh, try to get the name out there. Uh, if you have anything that you want to hear us talk about or uh, something you want to inform us on, if we might have been wrong or whatever, uh, you can send all questions, concerns, comments to our email, which is beardedgamemasters, all one word, at gmail.com. Uh, you could also like leave a like, comments down below, all of the fun stuff. Uh, it's just to let us know that you guys are around and actually listening. Yeah. Uh, once again, thank you and take care. Bye bye for now. <laughs>